Welcome to our lecture online. The most important variable stars are the pulsating variables, and in particular, the ones that are listed here on the board, and in particular, the one at the top of the board, the Cepheid variables. But all of these types of variables do play a role in our understanding of the universe. And note that all of these variable stars are actually part of the asymptotic giant branch of stars, meaning they're now all red giants. They're beginning to be at the end phase of the red giant stage. They've moved off of the horizontal branch. They're now in what we call the instability strip, and they're beginning to pulsate. The way they pulsate has a lot to do with what type of star they were when they were on the main sequence. Were they one of those giant OB type stars or BO type stars? whatever we want to call them, were they A-type stars or F-type stars or even smaller stars? It turns out the very large of the largest stars are the ones that pulsate the most. As they get smaller, if we take the stars when they were smaller in the main sequence, they pulsate, pulsate somewhat less. So the type of variable stars that they are are primarily due to the size of, of the stars as they were when they were on the main sequence. But the Cepheid variables, and notice that these are the OB type stars, so they're the very large red giants, the super red giants. When they get near the end of their life cycle as a red giant star, they begin to vary in brightness. They begin to pulsate both in radius and in temperature. And because of that, the brightness, the luminosity of the star varies over time. Now, typically, the period of Cepheid variables is from 1 to 100 days. More more precisely, it's between 1 and 80 days. So once you get over 80 days, then they turn into a different kind of variable, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Notice that Cepheid variables are type 1 Cepheid variables. They're also known by their classical name as classical Cepheid variables or delta Cepheid variables, as opposed to the type 2 Cepheid variables, which are slightly different in nature. Notice that type 1 Cepheid variables are Cepheid variables that are population 1 stars, and type 2 Cepheid variables are variables that are population 2 stars. The difference between population, population 1 and population 2 is that population 1 stars are more like the sun. They have more the heavy elements within them, where population 2 stars are the older stars that have less of the heavy elements that are just primarily hydrogen and helium, almost 100% versus population 1 star that may have as much as 1% of the other heavy elements within them. Then we have the RR Lyra variables, which are probably the most common type variables that we know of. They have a period of less than a day from about 12 to 24 hours. Notice that their periodicity uh, doesn't really equate to their sizes. They're all about the same type of size star. They're typically eight type stars. The change in the magnitude changes anywhere from 0.2 to 2 magnitudes. So from about a 20% change, in, a change in, their, in their magnitude to a six times or a six-fold change in their magnitude or their brightness. Then we have the mirror variables. Now the mirror variables are the largest of the, of the variable stars. They have periods that exceed three months or precisely, more precisely, that exceed 80 days. So you can see that Cepheid variables and mirror variables overlap a little bit in their period time, but we can see the difference between how they, how they vary. Notice that the luminosity of mirror variables vary um, tremendously from 2.5 to 11 magnitudes. 11 magnitudes, that would be a factor of more than 100, or about 250. But in other words, the luminosity of mirror variables can change by as much as 250 times in brightness from their lowest brightness to their highest brightness. And then we have some lesser known types of variables. We only named two of these. There's probably another dozen uh, different kinds of special type of uh, variable stars. They're not as common, but here to show you some comparison, we have what we call the Delta Scuddy variables, which are the dwarf Cephites. So instead of saying Cephite variables, sometimes we just simply say Cephites. They're also A to F type stars, so they're still bigger than average type stars, but their luminosity varies anywhere from about 1% to 100%, meaning from just a little bit to doubling in luminosity. So there's not a lot of variation in their luminosity, and their periods are rather small, anywhere from a 1 100th of a day to 2 tenths of a day. 2 tenths of a day would be about 4 or 5 hours. Then we have another type of variable star, which is very similar to the Delta Scudis. They're called the SX Phoenices variables. 
They're similar to them, except that these are mostly found in globular clusters. And notice that their magnitude changes about twofold, so they kind of double in brightness and go back to the normal brightness. And they do that in very short periods from about one to two hours, so they're much more clustered in the same amount of periodicity, where there's a little bit more variability in the SCUDI variables. Maybe just simply a fact that we haven't found enough of them yet and classified enough of them to see the, the, the main differences between them. But again, we're going to be concentrating mostly on the Cephalid variables. We'll touch briefly upon all the other ones, but the Cephalid variables are the ones that really have given us enormous insight into a lot of things in our universe. So we'll go into the details on that as well. And then we'll go more into details of how they vary, how much they vary in brightness, what that looks like on a chart, and so forth. But these are the main types of pulsating variables. And yes, they are a very important type. Again, remember, these are red giants near the end of their life cycle in the asymptotic branch, what we call this instability strip. And some of these are probably very close to becoming supernovas. We'll talk more about those later. And that is what we have as a summary for the pulsating variables. Okay. All right.